Subwoofer amplifiers can be confusing, especially when you get your bigger batter subwoofers. So your 18s, your 21s, even your 15 inchers, you're typically not gonna be using a plate amplifier anymore. Instead, you're gonna be using a professional style amplifier. And the question really comes down to, well, which one do you get and why? Well, today I'm gonna go look at three of the professional amplifiers that are out there for your subwoofers and kind of tell you the differences between them. Why can I do this? Well, I own all three of them, so. I'll tell you my experiences with them and tell you what to and what not to expect from them. Let's go ahead and dive into them right now. So three that we're going to be looking at today are the Crown XTI 2002, which retails around $965. We're also going to be looking at the Dayton APA 1200 DSP, which retails around for $550, and the Behringer NU6000, which has been replaced with the NX6000, and that retails for around $720. The real question here is, which one do you want to use and, and why? And it's important to note that both the Behringer and Crown are both professional amplifiers. They're designed to be used with PA equipment. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use them without professional equipment, like on subwoofers, like we're gonna be doing here, but it does mean that there's some differences that you need to be aware of, especially if you're gonna be using it with your home theater equipment. For example, let's talk about the inputs and outputs on these amplifiers. The Dayton APA 1200 DSP, well, it's really designed around home theater in mind. And because of that, it actually has RCA inputs, has RCA outputs, it even has digital coax input. And to go a step further, it has your 12 volt trigger, which can trigger on and off the amplifier when you're done using your equipment. And even on the output side, it actually has speaker wire output, so you can wire your subwoofers directly to the outputs. And it's easily marked how to run a mono subwoofer which in this particular case with this amplifier you're going to want to do and you'll see why in just a few minutes but let's take a look at the back of the crown and the behringer now you're going to see the rcas are all gone instead you're going to see these xlr and these combo inputs outputs uh, the crown does have speaker wire output but the behringer doesn't it uses what we call a speak on connector output and that's fine you can actually make your own cables with speak on and speaker wire to it but it's just an added expense that you're going to have to add on top of that you can't do rca directly out now typically a subwoofer output on the back of a receiver is rca so to run it right into the dayton no issue but to run it into something like the crown or something like the behringer you're going to have to buy some type of adapter cable and that in and of itself isn't an issue you can purchase those for relatively inexpensive but there is an issue when it comes to the actual input level see what happens is the output on the rca on the back of your home theater receiver uh, is typically a much lower voltage than something say a balanced input that these crown and behringer amplifiers would accept and because of that Depending on which home theater receiver you have, you may need to buy an Art Cleanbox Pro, and this just amplifies that signal, so you'll get the full power output out of these amplifiers that well, you're expecting out of them. Now the Dayton, you don't have to, because once again, they designed this around a home theater. You can just hit the switch on the back and you're good to go. Now that's how you hook it up, but really, if you're gonna be buying this for a subwoofer, you need to know how much power it is. Before we talk about how much power, we should talk about what type of amplifier it is. The Crown XTI series is a class AB amplifier, where the Dayton and the Behringer are both class D amplifiers. Now the Crown XTI power output, you can either do two outputs at two ohm at a thousand watts each, or at four ohm, those will be 800 watts each, eight ohm, 475 watts, or we can do a four ohm bridged mono channel, and that would be 2000 watts. You can also do an eight ohm bridge for 1600 watts. So it should have more power than you need for most subwoofers. Now the Behringer is a little bit sticky because the Behringer iNuke 6000 claims 6000 total watts. So here's the deal. It doesn't do 6,000 watts. In fact, it's been tested uh, numerous times to not output that. And one of those videos can be found in Williston Audio Labs. And per channel, it's getting about 2,050 watts at 4 ohm and about 1,250 watts at 8 ohm. That one can't be bridged. It's already bridged internally. So those are your output numbers. Still the most power output out of all of the amplifiers, even if they've well, fabricated the numbers a little bit. The Dayton's a little bit different because it does say it's a two channel amplifier. It's, uh, in fact, it does dual two ohm at 410 watts. It can do four ohm at 240 watts per channel or eight ohm 200 watts per channel. 
or four ohm bridge at 1160 watts. Here's the deal. You're going to be running this as a bridged amplifier at four ohm. It's only gonna have one output where the other ones are going to have two. And that is by far where the Behringer and the Crown hold a major advantage. And the reason why you're only gonna do one subwoofer on the Dayton is well because of its DSP feature. When we look at the DSP feature, both the uh, Crown and the Behringer do just your basic normal DSP. You're gonna have to hook up your computer via USB to it and you can DSP this with their own apps. The Crown uses what they call their HiQ Net and Behringer uses their NX Edit. You're gonna need a calibrated microphone to be able to sit at your listening position and with a little bit of knowledge you can DSP that to whatever response that you want. The Dayton's a little bit different as long as you hook it up as a mono subwoofer amplifier, you can actually use their auto DSP function. And with that, you'll take out their little calibrated microphone. You'll put it at five different listening positions inside your home theater, and then it will auto DSP it for you. It does all of the work for you. So it is great for someone that doesn't really wanna buy a calibrated microphone, doesn't really want to learn how to DSP it, it's going to do it for you. The only things that you have to do on the Dayton is you have to set your low pass and your high pass. And those are only Butterworth, but it does allow you to go down to 16 Hertz for your high pass cutoff at a 36 decibel slope. And that differs from both the Crown and the Behringer who have a 20 Hertz high pass and it goes up to 48 decibel. So they do have a little bit steeper of a slope, which does allow you to protect your subwoofer a little bit more, maybe even give it a little bit more power but it is gonna cut off the frequency a little bit sooner. Now, in order to set up that high pass and low pass on the Dayton Audio, you're just gonna connect this to the internet. You can, of course, do it from the front panel, but from the internet, you can go ahead and connect to any of your computers inside your household and make those changes. You can also fine tune it later if you want to fine tune that auto DSP. That makes it a little bit different to hook it up than the USB that you use on your Pro amplifiers. Another issue that you might have if you go with a Pro amplifier is its noise. Uh, pro amplifiers are designed for noisy Pro environments. It's just the way it is. And because of that, well, you might have to do some work on it for it to work inside your room. Now, the first time I turned on my Behringer iNuke 6000, I thought a helicopter was going off my room. It was so loud. Now, mine was used, but in general, the Behringer iNuke series or their new uh, NX series are really loud and you need to change out the fans now the fans themselves aren't very expensive they're noctua fans but that does mean you're gonna have to open up your amplifier and probably risk the warranty that's with it as well now replacing the fans itself isn't that big of a deal but once you replace those it's tolerable inside your room and you can use it just fine the crown i've used for quite a while and i gotta be honest the crown unless there's some crazy bass scenes uh, you don't even hear the crown running but then it will kick on and it will be uh, decently loud for a little bit of time, but nothing like the Behringer ever is. And I gotta say it's tolerable the way it is. And there is some talk that if you suspend it in the air, the fans may not come on at all. I don't know, I've never tested that, but there is that. As is, I think the Crown XTI, you don't need to change the fans, period. And the Dayton APA 1200 DSP, same thing. I've never felt like the need to replace those fans at all. It is much, much quieter. All right, so let's talk about listening impressions. Now, I've had first-hand experience with all three of these amplifiers, and out of all of them, the Crown XTI 2002 stands out as the one with the best sound quality. And is the one after each and every one of the amplifiers I hooked up to that I said I'm going back to. And that's because the bass just seems to be tighter, punchier, and it lasts longer. So during those really long bass scenes, the Crown XTI doesn't seem to give up as some of the other ones did. And for me, that's a really big deal. Now, the Dayton Audio is by far the easiest to use. So if you are only care about ease of setup, you get the Dayton Audio. And that's just the truth of the matter. It has the auto calibration mic, and because of that, out of the box, the Dayton sounded the best because, well, it was already DSP. The other ones, of course, I had to manually DSP. Now, having said that, it's probably second best in sound quality. I think it's a little bit better than the iNuke in my personal opinion. Now, the downside to that, of course, is you're limited to one subwoofer. Unless, of course, you wanna buy a second one, and if you wanna buy a second one, then, of course, you could hook up 
two high powered subwoofers. Now why would someone want to buy the Behringer? I think the only reason someone would want to buy the Behringer is its rated output, which of course isn't even true. But even with the misleading specs, it still is the most powerful out of all three units. Although you could get a more powerful Crown XTI, which really at the price that the Behringer is now, I think that's what I would personally do anyway. But if you want to go with the Behringer, it's because of the wattage is the cheapest per dollar. The truth of the matter is though, it's just not necessarily a great amplifier compared to the other two. It does have its quirks, you're going to have to replace the fans as we mentioned earlier. And although mine has been perfectly fine for me, I do know quite a few people that have had the Behringers and well, they haven't lasted. So you do have that as well. So which one's right for you? Well, I guess it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a wattage, go with the Behringer. If you're looking for best overall sound quality, go with the Crown. And if you're just looking for simplicity, go with the Dayton. All right, guys, this is Toys DIY Audio. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Thanks, guys. I'm out.